Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. This is Kent Myers. We're here every week, as you know, meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we welcome in a guy that's doing a lot of really good work on some really good causes today. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of what the honor flights are and that they're taking place right here in Oklahoma City. Well, I think you're right. We're going to have Gary Bands, the executive director of Oklahoma honor flights uh, on the show with us and uh, this show comes to us frankly on the recommendation of one of our sponsors Lulu Graphics. Sam Anderson there had her father uh, participate in one of the honor flights. Uh, he uh, uh, was a World War II veteran and mm -hmm. got to go back and see the memorial in Washington DC. She suggested it would be a, a good show because it's really an interesting project and uh, we talked about it. We completely agree and we're pleased mm -hmm. to be able to bring it to you. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really heartwarming to, to hear these stories and to, to see these uh, largely men, but men and women, uh, who are uh, able to see just how appreciative uh, Americans are today of the work they did and the, and the struggles that they were involved in a long, long time ago. We're going to learn more about the honor flights and uh, get to know Gary Bands up close and personal when we get back. I've always been a public servant. I've served either tribes, I've served the federal government, or I've served state governments. The law allows me to express my natural desire to advocate. My name is Stephanie Cochran. I am an attorney, and I am Chickasaw. Lawyers give their clients, and in my case, tribal governments, a voice. I and mean, it's through legal decisions that tribes have been able to accomplish and to regain some much lost footing that they encountered in the late 1800s and the 1900s. When I reflect back on this time in history, I think I will look at it in terms of opportunity. And I think now we have to turn those opportunities into long-term success for our future generations. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. People have been talking about energy independence for a long time. It's always been popular, but today it's possible. We have an enormous supply of oil and gas in the United States, much more than we thought just a few years ago. New technology, massive new discoveries, largely made by Oklahoma companies. It literally changes everything. And Oklahoma is leading the charge. Go watch this video to see why. Energy independence starts with us. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to bring to you uh, Gary Bands, the Executive Director of Oklahoma Honor Flights. We're going to be talking with Gary about the Honor Flight program and what's involved with organizing it, uh, serving the veterans that are affected by it, and a lot of uh, questions I think that you'll be interested in hearing his answers to. Gary did his undergraduate work at Southern Nazarene University, did his uh, master's degree work at the University of Central Oklahoma. He's a native of Midwest City. Uh, he uh, had a, a long uh, and distinguished military career, both on active duty and reserve duty, uh, before retiring. He also is a retired public school uh, teacher and coach, where he was very successful in a number of areas. He's involved in an awful lot of civic and charitable activities, and not the least of which, of course, is the uh, being the executive director of the Oklahoma Honor Flight Program. This is his first visit to the uh, uh, verdict. Uh, Gary, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to oh, share our story. I left out. He's also a state representative. But let's go on. To that. All right. Go ahead. Great to have you on the show, Gary. Uh, let's for the person who does isn't aware of what honor flights are. Why don't you sum it up, and then we'll, I want you to get into the origin of how how Oklahoma got started. Okay. Uh, Oklahoma Honor Flights uh, is a hub organization with a national group that started in 2005 in Springfield, Ohio, uh, called uh, Honor Flight Network Incorporated. It had a very uh, simple, small beginning, uh, and it was designed to meet a very specific need. Uh, that need was identified uh, as uh, 
un unless somebody acted on their behalf, the World War II community would probably not see their memorial because it was, a, it was erected six decades after their service and most of them had lived their adult lives and, and uh, were through traveling for the most part uh, and it was a, a doctor who uh, was visiting with a, a patient that uh, was a World War II participant and uh, had never seen the memorial and uh, through that very simple beginning a national organization was created. And in Oklahoma, how did, how did you get involved? <clears throat> that, that's a very interesting uh, development. I, I need to say on the front end, every veteran, all veterans who have worn the uniform of the, of the nation deserve our respect and our, and our admiration. We started specifically uh, as a result of the national organization to uh, pick up that emphasis on the World War II community. 16 million of them were in uniform, so there were a lot of folks around, and there's still, still quite a few around, even though they're in their late 80s and early 90s. Uh, my father was one of, everybody in our organization comes to this organization from their own perspective. I'll just tell you mine particularly, and we've kind of a couple of other uh, stories with it. My father was one of five brothers that were in the Navy in the South Pacific. And in May of 2004, the national dedication, May the 29th, I got my dad and his four brothers together and we had a small family reunion in, in DC in conjunction with that national observance. I was elected to the legislature in 2004. I served as first two years as vice chairman of the Veterans Military Affairs Committee. Subsequent to that, I've been asked to serve as chairman. And it was during that period of time uh, serving as chairman uh, that my father then got to go on an honor flight from central Kansas where he grew up. And so I was aware of, of his involvement with that national organization on behalf of veterans in central, local, uh, in central Kansas. Uh, the Veterans Committee doesn't get a lot of legislation that comes through there. So we we're always looking for ways to shine the spotlight on our veteran community. Knowing my father's experience, we had made contact with the national organization and had begun a conversation with them. About that time, a little bit later than that, in early 2009, uh, a constituent called me or sent me an email actually and uh, indicated that her father, a World War II veteran, had uh, been given an opportunity to join an honor flight group out of Dallas, Texas, and her husband got to go as the guardian on that flight. And through that simple beginning and, uh, and inquiry, it helped me understand I wasn't alone in my interest in, in that. And there were people in the district that I represented that had uh, an interest in that and that uh, we might be able to make something happen. So that was kind of the event that allowed a lot of us to coalesce around this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we continued to pursue a conversation with the national organization. Uh, were uh, made to understand what it would take to stand up a hub in Oklahoma to honor our veterans in conjunction with that national effort. And uh, in September of 2009, uh, we became officially recognized by the national group and in May of 2010 took our first flight. What's involved? Take us through a day, uh, the day of, of a, oh. one of these trips. Uh, a, day of, a day starts at 0430 or <laughs> 0400 uh, and it's a long, uh, intense day. But prior to that, literally hundreds of man hours and thousands of moving parts go together to put uh, in place all of the logistics that you need to rent a 737 for the day that seats 168 people, getting all of the veteran applications certified, notified, uh, coming together uh, with their respective guardians and uh, that then is the culmination of uh, which begins the day uh, we we in the Oklahoma City market when we uh, leave a uh, flight leaves from the Oklahoma City area we ha we have a send-off event the night before at Rose State College at the communication center there um, and that next morning we gather them all at about four o'clock at the Sheraton and uh, start uh, processing the boarding passes through Delta 
they come out there. Uh, we have special arrangements uh, with TSA to go through Will Rogers so that we don't have to uh, subject this very elderly, fragile group of folks to uh, the same rigors that the TSA folks put on the general traveling public. Uh, we get an OHP escort and uh, from uh, Midwest City to Will Rogers along with this last flight we had probably 50 Patriot Guard riders that were in that caravan and everything stops as we make our way from Midwest City to Will Rogers. We process through uh, TSA. We try to be wheels up about 7 or 7.30. Mayor Cornett, you've been out there mm -hmm. in the past to help greet those guys as they board the airplane. Uh, we taxi away uh, from uh, the terminal there under a water cannon salute from the fire department. Uh, we make our way to Washington, D.C. area. We fly into Baltimore. We're greeted with another water cannon salute with their fire department. Uh, we board buses uh, with the United States Park Service Police Escort, and we go uh, down to Washington, D.C., our first stop being the Memorial. Spend about an hour there, load the buses, go to the other end of the mall, Lincoln, Vietnam, and Korea Memorial. Spend another hour or so there board the buses, go across the river to uh, Arlington, changing of the guard, normally our uh, appointed hours at four o'clock, uh, changing the guard, Tomb of the Unknowns. We visit Iwo Jima, coming, either going in or coming out of there, Air Force Memorial, a drive windshield tour back through the district on our way back to Baltimore. Uh, try to be wheels up at about seven o'clock that evening, DC time, back home in, D in uh, Oklahoma City by 9.15 or 9.30. It's a, a long day. It That's is a long, long day, day. yeah. yeah. It, it is a long day, but yeah. so enriching. We're going to take a break and get back and learn more about the Honor Flights. Our guest is Gary Vans, who is the executive director of Honor Flights for the state of Oklahoma. A wonderful way to, uh, to honor those men and women who uh, served the United States so many years ago in our armed forces. We'll be back with more with Gary after this. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers visiting with Gary Bands about the honor flights, an opportunity for World War II veterans and others who served in the military many years ago to visit Washington, D.C., see the specific memorials, and let America pay tribute to this uh, wonderful generation. Uh, so um, talk about uh, the fact that it's, it's not just World War II. You have expanded it into people that have served mm -hmm. in other conflicts. Well, 16 million, as I mentioned before, were in uniform. So that's the primary group that we're looking to serve and, and for the purpose that uh, unless somebody acted on their behalf, they probably wouldn't see it. Uh, but <coughs> uh, we have taken to date on 19 flights, 1,765 Oklahoma veterans. The vast majority of those have been World War II. At one time in 2012, uh, we had between 650 and 700 World War II applications on our waiting list. Wow. So we've been 
we've been scrambling, if you will, to, to uh, get out from behind that backlog. We are now down. The last two flights that we took had have about the, uh, half of them are World War II veterans, half of them are Korean era veterans. Uh, they're in their 80, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, we take about, uh, on the high end, we've taken as many as 50 wheelchairs. Uh, okay. We want, not that they're all confined to wheelchairs, we move long distances through airports. Uh, it's a very long, challenging day, and we encourage them to allow us to make them king for a day yeah. and drop down in that chair and let us wheel them around and save their strength uh, so that uh, they, you know, because it's a very challenging day. Talk about the guardians. You used that phrase a minute ago. What role does the guardian Guardians play? provide the supervision and assistance. So uh, it's one guardian per right. Right now, on, on our early flights, we were taking over 100 veterans and about 60 to 65 guardians. That meant some of our guardians had jurisdiction over or supervision yeah. over more than one veteran. And we very quickly realized because of the fragile nature of, of the group uh, and some of the other logistical problems that uh, we faced and challenges that we faced, that we needed to roll that back to a one-on-one -on -one uh, accounting and uh, irony of ironies after we made that decision on our very next flight that was already in the hopper uh, we did lose one veteran for about an hour and a half he w he walked away it wasn't an Alzheimer's or a dementia kind of issue he was still operating on Central Standard Time and we were <laughs> on Eastern Time and he didn't get back to the appointed hour on time but uh, the Guardians uh, provide that assistance and we depend on extended family members first, that we extend to them the opportunity to go and serve in that capacity. Uh, if, if the veteran doesn't have somebody that they've identified that wants to serve in that role, then we have people who volunteer to go and, uh, and work it, uh, in that way. The guardians pay their own way. At, uh, they make a $500 donation to the organization, and frankly, that's how we uh, we pay for about 40% now of, of each of the flights, which run roughly $100,000 a piece. Wow. How many flights uh, did you say that the Oklahoma Honor Flights have? We've uh, done 19, 19 to date. And, uh, How many a year then does well, that work out? Well, the be? first year we did, uh, we've been in operation. We've just completed our fifth flying season. Okay. Uh, we took two flights in 2010, three flights in 11. We took six flights in 2012, three in the spring and three in the fall. We took four flights last year, and we've just completed our fourth uh, flight uh, two weeks ago um, uh, for the 2014 season. Total of 19. Any specific anecdotes or, or uh, stories that uh, you remember from these trips? Oh, that, that it, you? You, you literally immerse yourself in, uh, uh, in 80 to 100 living textbooks uh, from that era. Yeah. Uh, every conceivable... Uh, part of World War II, particularly that you can think of, we've had people on our flights who were participants there. I mean, you talk about Pearl Harbor, Iwo Jima, D-Day, Battle of the Balls, POWs. Uh, one that comes to mind quickly is uh, Philip Kuhn out of Sepulpa, who was a survivor of the Bataan Death March. I mean, there are these, now those are the extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of people that, in World War II that never saw combat. But that doesn't diminish the uh, the role that they played in terms of the overall effort. Uh, I will I will tell you, uh, you'll relate to this. Our team doctor, when we were at Putnam City years ago, was Dr. Neil Holden. Mm -hmm. He got to take a flight out of Tulsa. He's living with his children in, in the Tulsa area. Mm -hmm. Served in the Battle of the Bulge. And it was a very meaningful experience uh, for him uh, to be able to go on one of those flights. Ed Vesey, another uh, yeah. guy that's been around here, lives down in Moore now, uh, was a uh, USS Oklahoma yeah. Pearl Harbor survivor uh, that's still with us. I think he's 93 or 94 years old now and, and uh, still very active. Uh, but those, I mean, every flight has those kind of components to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, briefly describe uh, the you know, the, the impact of seeing that Vietnam Memorial. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, the World War II Memorial. I'm, I'm assuming that's, that's very impactful for these, for these people. It is, and the, and the whole flight uh, as a package literally has unlocked for hundreds of our families that are involved. Mm -hmm. It's more than just the veteran. Those guys, for the most part, who did things that no human being ought to have to do or see, as, as all participants in war do, 
the way they dealt with it, they came home and they buried it, and they buried it deep. And this activity, for a lot of them, mm -hmm. has served as a catalyst to open that up and to have grandpa or dad now finally talk about some things that, that they've never been willing to, to share before. And I'll share you with a good example. Mm -hmm. I was with Mark Wayne Mullen this morning uh, at another event. Uh, he got to go on our flight, Congressman right. Mullen, uh, out of uh, the eastern part of the state, District 2. He got to go on our second flight with his grandfather, and he described his incident with him this way. He said, Grandpa was as tough as, a le uh, as leather, and he said, I never saw my grandpa cry. He said, when we come out of that plane in Baltimore, and we were greeted by all those people lining the, the walkway, coming up that thing, waving those flags, he said, my, my grandpa just lost it. And he said, Grandpa said, let's get into the bathroom. And he said, we rolled into that bathroom. And, and I said, Grandpa, what was that all about? He said, Mark Wayne, you don't understand. When I came home from the war, it was a year after it was over. They dropped me off at a bus station, and I hitchhiked home. <laughs> there were no parades. Yeah. There was no fanfare. We came home and just picked up life as if nothing had gone on. And for him and for Mark Wayne and his grandpa, that, that happens. Mm -hmm. That kind of scenario happens mm -hmm. over and over and over on every flight. Well, I uh, would assume that a lot of our viewers are, are moved and hopefully to act. What can people that are watching the show do to help? <clears throat> our greatest need right now, we're coming down the home stretch. We've, we've taken a lot of, of folks. We've made 19 flights. Um, I don't know that we're at the end, but we can see it from where we are because of the nature of their age. Mm -hmm. and, and we're losing them at a very rapid rate uh, nationally, and that's true here in Oklahoma. We need people to help us find those World War II veterans who can still travel and are willing to travel and want to be a part of what we have to offer. That's our greatest need. We'll find the resources to make, uh, make those flights happen. Uh, Oklahomans have been just unbelievably generous with their support, uh, and we've—I mean, that's an anomaly. That's a whole—that would be a whole program just to talk about how mm -hmm. Oklahomans have supported this endeavor, and not one dime of the money that has come our way has gone to pay a salary. This is an all-volunteer group, from our board of directors uh, to the volunteer committees in both Tulsa and Lawton and Oklahoma City, uh, that have uh, helped stand up those send-off events and our welcome home events. Come. When we go to our website and see when we're having another flight, come to the send-off event. Mm -hmm. Come to the welcome home. We have three or 400 people at Will Rogers and in Tulsa International and a band and people there welcoming these guys home. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, you can't come through that line with a dry eye yeah. when you see some little lady reach over that, that line and shake the hand of one of those veterans and say, welcome home, soldier. You have uh, expanded uh, the eligibility, have you not, uh, to uh, veterans of the Korean War and the Vietnam War? Our primary emphasis is to serve the World War II guys. Yes. But we have been able to extend it beyond that because we've got to fill the plane. We've taken the position. About, about 30 seconds left. Okay, go ahead and finish we take the position that we wanted. If we were going to do it, we are going to do it big. And we only have one hub in the whole state to serve the whole state. Uh, so we want to fill that plane. We're still taking the charter flights, and uh, uh, as, and and we're down now to like I said, we're less than half of the flights are World War II guys. So we still have probably 140 Korean era applications on file. There weren't near as many people who participated in the Korean War, right. and even fewer in the, in Vietnam uh, overall. And we will get to some of those. Probably 650 to 700 Vietnam era veterans, like me have gone as guardians. So we've kind of served that group in a little different way because mm -hmm. uh, they've gotten to go as the guardians to provide that supervision for their grandpa or their fathers. All right, Gary Bands, Executive Director of Oklahoma Honor Flights. We'll give website information when we get back on how you can help Gary in his mission. Gary, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, and thanks for what you're doing. Absolutely. You Thank Kent you. and I'll have a final word after this.
children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. I really think people are so unaware of the number of kids waiting just in Oklahoma. And I think if more people knew that those children were out there waiting, you know, I think that just by the way we live our lives and the people we talk to, that, that maybe we could help encourage adoption from Oklahoma. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up a show with Gary Vans. That was about as inspirational as I can remember one of our telecasts being. Well, it really was. And, of course, the program that uh, Gary is the uh, executive director of, the uh, Oklahoma Honor Flight Program, is just doing a wonderful service for the vets and the families of the vets, uh, all at uh, no taxpayer cost to speak of and uh, through private donations. It's just a marvelous program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have some website information how you can get involved and help Gary and his, and his friends. It is at OklahomaHonorFlights.org. That's OklahomaHonorFlights.org. And Kent and I have a website about the verdict. We'd love for you to visit our website and tell us about a guest you'd like to see on an upcoming edition. Our website is TheVerdict.tv. That's TheVerdict.tv. That's going to do it for this week's show. Our thanks to Gary Bands and thanks to you for joining us right here on The Verdict.